Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. This is David with Faramir's Rangers and I'm bringing you a multiplayer match. It's actually going to be 2v3 on the Homestead match. I think I said that. At any rate, this is going to be a great matchup. I'm going to be playing as USA with the green around the flag and Warfighter will be playing as Great Britain. One of our friends will be playing as France. In the middle is somebody I don't really know playing as USA with red around the flag. That's because they're the enemy. And then the final player all the way on the other flank is another USA player with, again, red around the flag. And they will be, of course, our enemies in this. The three against the two of us, me and Warfighter. And you can see Warfighter quickly taking advantage and knocking out one of the cav units from our opponent in the middle the center of the map all right so let's go ahead and break this thing down this is going to be absolutely a fun matchup and just to give you kind of the strategy on how it's breaking down here's the map and you can see the opening movements us of course with the green around and them with the red and here you're gonna see I have a left um, flanking force that's going to be pushing of course the left flank that's why I said left yeah if that wasn't obvious enough <laughs> and here on the left flank you're gonna see my long rifles are going to be getting some opening shots on the enemy Delaware as they push forward and I am going to use this advantage to kite back. I'm going to be taking on the entirety of the flank player, one of our friends, army, with only a portion of my army. It's about a little bit more than a third of my army is going to be facing off against the entire force of this American opponent. So I am going to have to fire and withdraw, and then my next third of my army they will soon run into as you can see here anchored off by my maryland in the center and a grenadier and a marine and a cup and i think a minuteman and so now i have two-thirds of my army against them but they are pushing up quickly so to cause a little bit of a delay i am going to use one of my light dragoons to counter charge into them and try to cause a disruption so I can gain a little bit more space and the more space the merrier because I have my light infantry or my long rifles getting some great shots into them and uh, mostly into their elite units and I want to continue that so I'm using my cab as a disruption force and I'm going to hit them in the back over here on their far right hand flank and I'm going to push them forward as you can see, I'm bringing up two more Light Dragoons over here to get some shots on them. And then I'm going to quickly withdraw my far left against their far right. As you can see, I'm getting some great damage done to them with actual minimal forces. As they have bunched their men up quite, quite condensed. So it's giving me maximum damage against them. Which is quite nice and you can see my light dragoon pulling through and here's my other third of my army with my grenadiers and i'm going to use my grenadier unit to hopefully push them back and i thought i was going to top the hill without them being able to get shots unfortunately that wasn't the case as i do get a grenade throw here in thankfully but uh it's on a minute men unfortunately but i do get a nice hit on them taking him down to 79 men and the next throw he does run quite quickly from my next grenade volley but it does push them back in the center and unfortunately there's some French cab that comes up and gets some shots on my grenadier and takes it out over here on my far left I have folded back almost swinging at a 90 degree angle I'm continuing to swing around I'll show you that here in just a moment moment what I'm speaking about and I'm being pressured by all the enemy cab but I'm gonna use my line infantry as a screening force for my light dragoons as you can see the shot from that flanking goon goes right into my line infantry instead of my cav 
which gives me the ability to get some good shots off on their calf, which they had a way larger amount than I did. As you remember, I used that center light dragoon as a um, disruption force earlier. So now I'm down to three light dragoons. I did lose one, but I did get some great shots on them um, in the in that little scuffle. Now you can see here what I'm talking about. You can see me on the left as I am folding around, warfighter in the red pushing the right. And so you can see how things are unfolding on the battlefield a little easier. Now you can see again, my long riflemen are getting some great shots on their Marines as they push forward. And again, another flanking fight here with another uh, line of infantry shielding for my light dragoons. These are my last three light dragoons. And I am going, getting my shots and pulling out. I'm getting some great shots on their cav. Now the French cav has come back again. They they got rid of my grenadier, which irks me. And now they're trying to push through. And I use some of my line from my center force to hold them back. And here is the killing blow on a lot of the cav of the enemy force. He does end up getting two Light Dragoons out of it, but I have crippled him pretty harshly there. I still have three Light Dragoons, although I do end up losing one here as I take some shots on his line infantry as my line start pulling back. But my two Light Dragoons remaining have pretty su uh, sufficient numbers and theirs are very depleted. So I am actually in the lead on the light fight and now I'm taking shots from my long rifles on their first Maryland, knocking it down, which is quite wonderful. Their French cab was trying to go through the valley region and I block them from doing that. Here is my killing strike on the remaining cab from the opponent that is pushing me on the flank. And here we go, this should be quite nice I get a shot on the infantry I'm gonna go ahead and charge my light dragoons into theirs and knocking out one of their line infantry smashing them to another I should cause quite a bit of damage here punching through and then I will recall my light dragoons back so I don't take too much damage and you can see here now what's going to happen is they are pushing against Warfighter getting further away and I see an advantage here where I could possibly pincer the army that's facing off against Warfighter and I'm pretty sure I can keep the pace faster than the opponent I'm facing here on the flank is going to be able to keep up with me as he's going to be trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing and you can see here I'm gaining a sizable gap between myself and that opponent and the French cab is standing between me and the French and American forces facing off against Warfighter so I've got to punch through this cab and then I can make some advance on the French and the Americans here now you can see Warfighter under quite a bit of pressure here against the French and Americans alright so now it's time to have some fun against these guys you can see the French cab now coming up to the main body of the French army and the American army now I will say I thought we'd be able to get a good pincer on them but the French player does see what we're doing so credit to him I believe this is going to be Confederate is the player's name that is playing in France and he sees what I'm doing and he's gonna be swiping his army trying to get it over to where the American is my light dragoons coming in here taking some shots on his uh, guards as they kind of fold back around my light infantry getting some shots on more of his elites as they run away so I'm getting some great shots on them and you can see here the Royal Essos as I bring my light dragoons up for another shot on them and I don't want him getting away with too many and we deplete him quite nicely I mean he had almost a, a full strength unit there and he's down in the at least the 30s and you can see now they have all gone to the cliff area and that's gonna slow down our advance unfortunately this is gonna be a very bad problem for us because 
they're going to be able to consolidate. Now, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. And I want to actually bring you back in time, showing you what happened on Warfighter's side. So this is at the beginning of the battle. So you can kind of see how things progressed on his side. You can see he is bringing his force around, sweeping. Unfortunately, he had a lot of his units spread out, and the French player was planning on consolidating with the American player. So Warfighter is at the moment spread out, but he is going to make the push nonetheless. And he gets some great shots in here with the green jackets and gets a great shot on his elite there as it's making its withdrawal. And you can see how the French player is pulling up almost at a 90 degree angle from the American position. Now I have some units facing off against the American position here in the cliff region and that's going to keep most of the American forces facing me and then Warfighter can square off against the majority of the French army but a few Americans namely their long rifles are over there assisting and you see he's folding his immediate flank on his left and he's going to then move his long rifles because he's afraid of getting shot by the green jackets even though they have a 4-2-2 advantage with the light infantry they do not take that which is quite surprising you can see the long rifleman running away from the fight so it's a two on two now as the tealers open up first on the green jackets but they don't get great shots on them and Warfighter is going to make a fabulous move here uh, against the French player that is going to significantly reduce down the French light infantry. As you can see, his Cav Light Dragoons comes up here and gets a great shot on the Tealers and takes them down quite a bit, both of them in the, in the 40s. So that gives now warfighter an advantage and now he's still getting shots in with his green jackets on the TLRs and got him down to 37 and continuing to put more damage in on him so this light infantry fight is actually turning out quite nicely for warfighter and considering the fact that he's actually taking on quite a bit here and you can see just kind of a skirmish fight here now the American player is going to move one of his long rifles over um, and again warfighter trying to get another shot on the light infantry but his he does move the lines forward um, but it, he at least gets some shots on the line infantry unfortunately not the light infantry but one of the long rifles for the American player in the center is going to go up on that small hill, which is a bad mistake, as you're going to see. Warfighter did have a line infantry there. I don't think he realized it. And that line infantry is going to get into the long rifles, but not before he does get one shot off. Um, but this is going to put that long rifle out of the match, which is good because we don't want to have them with any advantages in the rifle fight so here you're going to see the american player pushing with a small portion with the french player and warfighter is getting some nice flanking shots with the green jacket and his light dragoons unfortunately his green jackets there on that flanking force are not going to make it out as the american is going to return the favor for what warfighter did to his long rifle However, Warfighter has done quite a significant amount of damage to the French TLRs, actually knocking one out. So it's a one rifle to a one rifle fight here. So that gives our side the advantage in the rifle fight. As they are actually even with us, which they started out two up on us, obviously, it being a 2v3. And you can see his black watch getting some nice shots in on the British. And he's going to knock out another Marine unit here. You can see the American bringing a flanking force around trying to flank Warfighter. 
but he's spending too much time on the maneuvers and not enough time in the fight. Again, the French player tries to make a push, but pushes right into the two black watch again, and he is going to quickly withdraw from that fight, even though he does have the numerical advantage. And again, here is the American player pushing now off the cliffs into the open field and getting some pretty devastating hellfire from two line infantry and two light dragoons. But now that they're starting to form up, this is something Warfighter is going to have to leave the fight because he will not be able to fare well in that fight. And you can see in the background, my American forces coming through the woodland of the cliffs behind the French player. You can see the green lines representing my movement points. And so now we have a chance to pincer them. But again, the French player is going to make a great move and push his army towards the American player. This is a critical move and actually one of the best moves that our opponents make in the game. As you can see, he's going to force his men forward. So now back to where we left off. You can see now how Warfighter got to where he was. And now you know how I got to meet back up with Warfighter. And we're now at the enemy's starting position and they are on our side of the battlefield. We kind of flip-flopped because of the French retreat. And you can see he retreated all the way back into the cliffs. Unfortunately, this is again a problem for us because we need to eliminate these two players before the other American that I was in the fight with does catch up with us. As you can see, he's slowly moving to flank around on our now right flank and once he comes up on us this is going to be a problem so we had an ability to take the fight 2v2 for a while uh, but I think Warfighter saw the opponent coming up and he pushed quite a bit of his men over to the right flank uh, which is something we didn't need to do we needed to push forward against the French and the American player so now we're gonna have problems as you can see them coming forward I am trying to do as much damage as I can with my long rifles as you can see I'm popping down Marines here and there and also on a pretty bulky French line I'm taking some shots on them with my other long rifle and the American player that used to be in the center is making a push on our left and the French player is making a push to the center so I'm gonna get some shots before I withdraw as you can see he's got several elites there which are quite a bit more than my three marine units or two marines in a line so I'm going to have to withdraw from that it's not a fight I can win the right flank is in problem. The left flank is in problems. We got problems everywhere. It's just now the numbers are catching up with us. And you can see the French player getting some shots on Warfighter's Cav. And Warfighter is going to return the favor. But all those Marines over there are extremely problematic. I'm trying to bring my light dragoons over to help. But they're pretty far away at this point. So it's going to take a lot of time for them to get over there. Now the French player pushing in the center is becoming a big problem with us. That is the bulk of their army is the French player. As uh, Warfighter has whittled down quite a bit of this American making a push. He, he had a full army of Marines and now he's down to about eight or nine. And you can see how large the French army is. Um, but luckily he's very compact. Uh, rather than spread out and that does help us now I am going to make a push to try to force the French player back and I I had hopes for uh, causing a major disruption and major, major damage to him as I spread a line out to absorb a lot of the damage take my two Marines to face off against the American forces and I've got a grenadier coming forward <clears throat> and I'm going to try and do some damage with my last grenadier unit 
and at least if nothing else I can push the French player back and I'm only using three line or, th or two lines and a grenadier to do this versus a pretty large French force and you can see I got a great hit with the first volley of grenades the second volley the noise I guess uh, alerts him that I dropped grenades on him and he is gonna hightail it out of there and then he is going to make a really good move to counter my third volley of grenades and here comes my fourth he is going to continue to move and now he's setting up to get flanking shots on my grenadiers as I throw my fourth volley and he runs from that so I'm in a spot where I got to keep targeting and I think and you can see the American player is getting shots on my grenadier as well but again I do force him back and cause the disruption and my Marines are getting some good damage in too but now I've got to fold back as that attack did not work and, and all the while too I was getting some great shots with the long rifles um, so that disruption did give us bias a little bit of time and Warfighter had some really good moves in there with his cab that I didn't get to show you um, so Warfighter did some good moves in there as well <clears throat> as you can see the end is nigh we just don't have enough men Warfighter throwing his cab in to cause a little bit of disruption um, but we just don't have the forces to keep up with them. The numbers are going to put us out of our misery here in just a moment. As you can see, me taking another volley on a Marine unit and get charged by a depleted one as I withdraw from that. And again, it's just pulling back, trying to get as much damage as we can because we do have the range advantage and I am making full use of that getting some great damage here but actually it's to the point now where we just almost got to stand our ground because <clears throat> we're we're rolling giving our um, giving warfighter a chance to reload and then once I volley um, then I roll back sit let him take the shots while I reload so it's flip flop flip flop but you know, we're just running out of units because they're willing us down it's just not looking pretty at this point. You can see the American Marines pushing us on uh, the, our enemies, American Marines pushing us here. So this pretty much is going to do it for this battle. Unfortunately, we are not going to come out victorious. We, I think we had a pretty good shot there for a moment, but we, uh, the French players move to fold back and make it to his American ally was actually the saving move because if we were able to pincer the French army there I think we would have won this match as we had again superior rifle advantage and unfortunately it just was not to be but anyways I hope you did enjoy this match as I certainly did it was quite a bit of fun. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for us, but it was still fun nonetheless. And here in just a moment, you'll get to see the results from the battle. And these type of battles do give you a lot of experience. And uh, you can see I got 1,700 kills. Warfighter almost 1,400 kills. And you can see the damage that my units did. Obviously, long rifles getting the bulk of the damage and the light dragoons and yeah pretty pretty fun match and i hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you on the next one as always this is david with fairmere's rangers we will see you on the next one guys